Hey ladies and gentlemen, on the road again for vlog number three on the way to the Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course and site for today's Indy Car Race. I left the house very, very late, uh, just after 11 p.m., or not p.m., 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Drop of the green flag, 12.53 Eastern Standard Time. How many miles away from the track do I live? about 70 so we need to we need to get a move on here i'm expected to get to the track 15 to 20 minutes before the drop of the green uh so this is uh definitely a lot closer i had to pre i had to do a uh, predictions video for you guys before i left had to get that edited uh i had to make sure i ate i didn't even have time to work out this morning so i have to do that tonight after the nascar cup series race and probably after the stream but i don't have to work tomorrow so it should work out Probably not going to be a long vlog considering this is just a one day there and back kind of situation and uh, the race itself is just the IndyCar race. It's not like last week's vlog where uh, there was a lot of racing throughout the course of the night. So we're going to go. We're going to have fun. Going to have to get some food at the track. I haven't eaten much today. Probably going to end up having to do that after the race and I'm going to try to get some unique perspectives of the race from different areas of the racetrack throughout the course of today's action as well. Obviously depending on how many cautions there is because if we see a lot of yellows uh, then I'm going to be able to move around a lot more. If there's not a lot of cautions, it's going to be hard for me to move from my spot because I don't want to miss any of the green flag action. If that music doesn't get you pumped up for a race, I don't know what will. Anyway, uh, as of right now, it is currently 1219 and I am not at the track yet. I have about another 21 miles still to go. So. Uh, like I said, I'm cutting it very, very close to the start of today's race. I really hope I don't miss it. Uh, if I do, I, I mean, I guess it's my fault. I could have gotten up a little earlier. I set my alarm for 7.30, but just between recording and editing, you know, the video earlier today, happened to get in the shower and get some breakfast in me. I mean, that took up about three and a half hours, which is about accurate, and then I left. I, I should have planned better. I definitely should have planned better. And uh, definitely for next week's truck series race, I know to do that. I'm going to make sure I leave the house. I think the race next week starts a little bit earlier, or a little bit later than today's race starts. But uh, even still, I'm going to leave earlier than what I did today. Because uh, that kind of stinks, to be completely honest. Uh, that, that's, I guess, what happens when you have a YouTube channel and you have a uh, full-time job on the side. So definitely hit that like button. And definitely subscribe for more daily NASCAR content. Help me out uh, so we can get better videos at the track. I will say the good news is, is I've been to this track before, so I kind of have an idea of where exactly to go. And uh, honestly, for the start of the race, for the start of the race, where the parking is, I'm going to be on the turn two side. So the idea is to probably just go over and turn two uh, to see the start of the race, and then once they get, uh, if they end up having a caution at all, then I'll move uh, probably down towards turn one and into the infield section. I'll have time to be able to do that. But, uh, uh, that's probably going to be the best case scenario so I don't miss the start of the race. There it is, off of the, well you can't see now, but over this hill, there it is, off of the distance, mid-Ohio. And uh, we are set to go road course racing today. I have literally 14 minutes for the drop of the green flag. There's turn two. I mentioned turn two is by the parking lot. So uh, I think as long as there's not a gigantic line, I should be able to get parked and uh, stand up there for the start of the race. Now, at least from the outside, it seems as if there's more people here for the IndyCar race this year than what there was for the Xfinity race last year. I think 4th of July weekend probably helps with that. And plus, it's a nationally televised event on the main NBC network today. But uh, this is a lot of getting in for the parking. We are still parked, and I have about 12 minutes until the drop of the green flag. And uh, I, this is what I was not hoping for, but that's the price you pay when you leave a little bit later than what you should. This lane to my right literally is moving. My lane has not moved at all yet. Not one car forward. Look at them. It's like they're letting the right lane in. And the left lane is just like, yeah, you guys can just sit here. What is this? Why is only one of the four lanes moving? Like, even the other two lanes to the right of me aren't moving. There's like a 10-year-old. <laughs> Looks like a 10-year-old working the ticket thing on this side. I don't think she knows what she's doing. She's probably underage. She's not. She's underqualified for the job. What is going on here? See, look at this. I don't even think she's 10. She's probably like 6. Now they're just what? They're just letting people in? She's she's trying to say, come, come forward. This is why kids should not be in charge.
So leaving mid-Ohio following the IndyCar race, I've got the NASCAR race on my phone waiting on traffic to get out of here for the time being. Time to talk about the pros and cons. So uh, mid-Ohio, uh, a couple things. Parking getting in, I would have thought was going to be a little bit easier. Again, most of the blame is on myself for not leaving earlier. So uh, that I'm going to brush aside. Uh, finding a way to leave this place, I thought I got back to the car pretty quickly after the race. And uh, I have not really moved in the last 15 minutes, just kind of stayed in the parking stationary. Outside of that though, as far as the race itself, it was a lot of fun. Uh, I will say it was a good thing that they brought Videotrons to this racetrack. I'm not sure if it's just for the IndyCar race this weekend or if it'll be there for NASCAR next week. I think it's the tracks, uh, Videotrons, they did not have those before. At least in turn one where I was at for the Xfinity Series race last year, they didn't have anything. So, on the bright side, they have them in turn one. I sat and watched the race as you guys saw in turn four. You could see five, six, and seven from that area. And of course that long straightaway where there's a kink uh, in turn three as well, uh, which technically would be turn three on that long uh, flat out uh, section of the racetrack off the exit of turn two. So a lot of, a lot of fun, it was a good race. Um, I'm gonna definitely get back here a little bit earlier than what I did for next week's NASCAR Truck Series race. Another con would personally be the push to pass in the IndyCar. You can't really tell, I guess is the best way. You can't tell how much a driver has left of the push to, push to pass at all throughout the course of the race. I'm surprised they don't show that on the leaderboard like they would you know, on the leaderboard if you were watching the race on NBC. So that would be another kind as well because it was really tough to tell late, especially with a semi-close battle for the lead at the end of the race. I didn't know how much push to pass Alex Below had left to uh, potentially uh, make a late move in the draft, especially uh, in between turns three and four where we saw most of the passes earlier today. It is a quarter till four. I'm still here. I might be in the parking lot after the race waiting to get out of here in my car longer than it actually took for the race to complete today. Guys, one of the Aero McLaren car haulers have already gotten out onto the road. I'm still in the lot. Why do they get the preferential treatment? It is currently 4.20 p.m. and it has now been almost an hour and a half since I have been in my car in the parking lot. Uh, literally an hour and a half drive for me to get from home to here and it has taken that long just to get out of the parking lot after the race. Nearly two hours after I got to my car following today's IndyCar race, I am finally back on the road again. We're at the street corner uh, towards the end of where I guess the main entrance is at Mid-Ohio. So that is where we are at right now. Just to put it in uh, perspective, it is the end of stage two in the NASCAR race right now and I'm just leaving the racetrack. So. Oh my goodness, so uh, I still have an hour and a half drive home, probably going to miss the, start, or the end of the race, so I'll just be listening to it right here on my phone, glance it over from time to time, a bunch of country roads on the way back, so it shouldn't be too bad traffic once I get on the road, it's just the parking lot uh, situation that I had to deal with there, so at least it's over, uh, I could plan for next week how it's going to work with the truck race, and honestly I don't think there's going to be as many people there, it's not a holiday weekend like it was today, there were far more people at the track today than what there was for the Xfinity Series race at Mid-Ohio last year. It was unbelievable. I mean, the place was packed and uh, it, there, it wasn't like that, at least on that end of the racetrack or the two ends of the racetrack I was at earlier today. Hey guys, this is Keegan Post Editing here. Just wanted to say that this is the end of the video. Like and subscribe for more daily NASCAR content and the next vlog slash race highlight videos will be at Mid-Ohio next weekend for the NASCAR Camping World Truck Series race. Thank you, enjoy, and I'll see you guys next time.